Welcome back, everybody. Once again, I am Dr. Faust, here to invite you into the wonderful world of miniature painting. Today we're going to learn about colors, and we're going to go over a lot of different ideas. Color theory, color balance, color theming. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time discussing traditional color theory. Uh, while that's important, there is a, a bit too much emphasis on that sometimes when it comes to miniature painting. Uh, if you look up various articles on color theory, it will tell you what colors you must use and shouldn't use. And uh, when it comes to miniatures, that's just not really true. The color theory that we're going to discuss, I actually prefer to call color theming. And a lot of you probably already know about how certain colors can uh, reflect the object, or in this case, the miniature that you are painting. Uh, you already know that greens and browns represent nature very well. Blues and purples represent royalty. Uh, you can even have emotions. Red representing uh, something hot or anger, and you know, blue something more somber. So throughout this video, I'm going to explain to you why I picked certain colors instead of other colors, and hopefully it'll give you an idea of how to pick colors for your own miniature to best fit their theme. Today we're going to be painting this orc bard, and you can see he's wearing some really fancy clothes. He's really well dressed, so that tells us that he's a really good bard. He's getting paid well and playing the finest establishments. And that information helps to tell me what colors I want to use to paint him. So the first color we're using is turquoise because it's a little bit similar to blue, representing royalty. Uh, it's also it's a very bright color. Uh, he wants to attract attention. He's not hiding in the back of the crowd. No, he's on the table singing away at the top of his lungs. He wants everyone to see him. The turquoise is our currently one and only shade layer because there's not a whole lot of deep recesses on his robe tunic thing that he's wearing. We don't have to add a whole lot of shade. Uh, so over that I'm now placing a light turquoise. Uh, it's much brighter in color. Once again we do want to go with bright colors on this miniature and the previous turquoise is pretty much all being covered up except for in the deepest recesses. For our first highlight, I went ahead and mixed in some white to the light turquoise, and because we do have these large, broad, flat areas, we've got to keep the paint very thin. Remember, layers slowly build up to the proper color. Note that you don't always want to go with simply adding white to create a highlight, because white can bleach out a color. However, our light turquoise is very light, so adding white to it is actually a, a natural progression for this color. Our second and final highlight is the same light turquoise with more of the white added uh, because this is a very broad flat surface not a whole lot of ridges to highlight here so we just need to go around and pick out the edges of his dress. In order to make his robe appear a little bit more fancy we're gonna add a little freehand to it. And what I have here is a mix of glacier blue and dark sea gray. And I'm just adding little S squiggles, a little pattern to his dress to make it a little bit more interesting, visually interesting. Uh, and I have this thinned with a good amount of glaze medium. That allows me, uh, it slows down the drying time, so in case I make any little errors here, I can quick, quickly wipe them away with no issues. It makes freehanding much, much easier. The pattern I'm doing here is very simple. Like I said, I'm not doing anything very geometric. Uh, doing a non-geometric pattern is a lot easier. Doing something uh, with straight lines is much more difficult. And also, I want this very subtle. I don't want anything stark that's going to stand out too much. Two 
to soften the pattern and to blend it into the dress a little bit more, uh, going over it with a couple glazes of blue and violet ink mixed. And did about two over the entire dress, and then in the, well, not really recessed area, but the shade area where the cape covers it, uh, gave that about two more coats just to darken that area a little bit more so the pattern is even more obscured in the shade. We're going to jump to the pants now because I wanted to paint those orange, which by the way is a contrasting color to our uh, turquoise. Uh, because I knew I wanted to use some orange on this miniature and I want to establish this color before moving on to uh, other minor colors uh, because if you establish the large surface areas first that'll help you decide what colors to use later on. Now we're starting with a deeper shade on the arms and the legs here because uh, there's more shade area here that uh, is going to require more shade colors. So. We're starting with a dark mix of flat brown mixed with deep orange. Our next shade layer is straight deep orange, leaving the previous layer in the deepest recesses. For our base coat, we are going with light orange. It's a very bright color, leaving that previous deep orange on the underside of the arms, for example. That, those are the areas that we want to leave in shade. And then we finish up with two additional highlights, adding golden yellow to our light orange orange. Keeping to our theme of our fancy orc bard here, I want to do a little freehand to the pants, add a little bit more detail to them. Decided to go with just stripes. Very easy to paint. Uh, a simple geometric pattern to straight lines. Uh, for that we're using hexed lichen and once again glaze medium added to uh, make it easier to clean up any errors. And doing straight lines like this uh, it's easier if you paint a very thin line and then slowly work it out and widen it. To highlight the stripes, we are going with straight purple, and there's two different ways to highlight stripes. You can uh, highlight them normally, or you can work towards the center and the, uh, the top highlights. Uh, working towards the center can make them look uh, much more dynamic, uh, especially if you leave a, a dark edge at the edge of each of the stripes. And by the way, I'm terrible at freehand painting. As you can probably tell, that's why I try to keep things fairly simple here. So if you're scared about doing it, just keep the pattern simple. And once again, the glaze medium helps in case you make any errors. But uh, even I have to go back and fix a little boo-boo here and there. Just go back and reapply the base coat if needed. For our first highlight, we add squid pink to our purple and highlight the stripes as well as the puffy sleeves. And here is where we discuss something else that's very important in miniature painting, and that's balancing your colors. What that means basically is that whenever possible, if you have one color, let's say on the bottom of the miniature, well then you want to balance it with the same color on the top of the miniature as well. So for example, on this miniature, we have the purple stripes, which is balanced by the purple shoulders. We have the orange uh, arms and legs, and we also have the blue, which is used throughout the miniature. 
What that does is make the entire paint job more visually cohesive. Uh, you have the same colors used here and as well as over there. This doesn't necessarily apply to every single color that you use on the miniature, uh, but when it comes to your main colors, it just looks more visually appealing if you balance them. For our second and final highlight, for our purple, I added some white to the mix, and I concentrated this color mainly on the edge areas of the puffy sleeves so they are well defined, and also apply just a little bit to the knees uh, of the pants. Here's where things get a little bit tricky, and you're going to see a huge montage of colors being applied to the back of the cloak. For the cloak, I first decided to go with red, and I was going to over-highlight it, get it all the way up to uh, a very light orange or even yellow so it matches the sleeves uh, to work up that highlight just on the upper edge of the cloak and leave the bottom as a deep red. I felt that I needed to have one more color to the miniature here, just to keep up the uh, the bright, uh, I don't want to say clownish, but definitely uh, extravagant flamboyant co uh, colors on our orc bard here. Uh, however, the cloak is so large and I ended up adding so much red, it started overpowering the miniature. My original plan was to balance the red by painting the trim or the, the trim on the robe or perhaps his boots. Uh, red, so to balance that color out. Uh, however, it ended up being just too much red on the back. Rather than repainting it, well, entirely repainting it, uh, I decided to go with something else. I decided to try doing a, a, a scintillating color cloak, a multicolor cloak. Uh, what I ended up doing was highlighting towards up towards yellow towards the top of the cloak. Uh, but as we got towards the bottom, I started transitioning colors, uh, basically just using a color wheel or a Roy G. Biv as a guide, if you know what that is. It's a, a red, orange, yellow, it's the whole color spectrum. And to the red, I simply then moved, as I moved to the bottom of the cloak, uh, I did a layer of uh, red violets, and then from there I went to violet, and from there I went to blue, and as I kept adding more colors, I ended up covering up more and more of the red. I actually uh, went back about twice to make the actual red more of just of a band of color on the cloak rather than the main color. Doing this allowed me to de-emphasize the red, which I ended up not using anywhere else on the miniature, and increase the colors that I did use, uh, purples, uh, blues, and it allowed me to introduce a little bit of red-violet, which was more matching the colors that I used. Uh, this does pose a little bit of a problem uh, because we still have red on the cloak and nowhere else on the miniature. However, uh, we do have a convenient fact here is that you can't see the back of the cloak from the front of the miniature. So the cloak itself is balanced, and then when you look at the other colors on the front of the miniature, you don't see the red. So it's actually still balanced because you can't view the front and the back of the miniature at the same time. So it's a bit of a visual trick that I employed here to work in another color without it clashing or needing to balance on any other area of the miniature when viewed from the front. For the trim, I decided to go with gold. Initially, I started with blue, but that was just too intense. It was adding too much blue to the cloak. So gold it is. And for that, I started with a base of English uniform, uh, excuse me, a shade of English uniform. And now we are adding the base, ironically, using gold brown. I didn't want to use actual metallic paint for this uh, gold metallic paint because we're not painting literal gold here, it's just gold trim. Uh, do want to mention though, since we're sort of on the subject metallics, when I'm talking about color balance, it, you don't have to balance every single color on the miniature. Some things the human eye recognizes as just 
needing to be a certain color. Uh, metallics, especially your gray metallics, and to a lesser extent gold. Uh, you can have a little bit of gold here. Uh, you can have a fully clothed miniature and have a sword uh, in just in one hand because everyone knows what a sword looks like. And other little uh, accoutrements, uh, a leather pouch, uh, you know, brown boots, uh, skin tones as well. You don't have to necessarily balance all of those. So uh, it's just your main colors, your primary colors, and your secondary colors you want to try and balance whenever possible. Our first highlight is pale yellow, and I'm sort of painting this with a non-metal metallic style, just to give an extra little sparkle to our orc bard here. So, uh, especially on the cloak, any single area that I can possibly highlight, I'm hitting those highlights really hard. We're driving up the contrast to give it more of a, a sheen, a sparkle to it. And the final highlight color, white, added to the pale yellow. Once again, really overemphasizing any change in direction on that cloak. On to the skin, and keeping with our bright color theme, I decided to use a, a bright color for the skin as well. So I went a little bit more into the green range than your typical orc. Uh, for the base coat, I used a mix of black green and US dark green, and now I'm applying the uh, base coat, which is uh, the same two colors with escorpina green added to it. For our next highlight, just add more of the Escorpina green. And for our final highlight, a little flat yellow added to the mix. Final thing to paint, other than a little bit of touch-up work, is the hat and the boots. And this is a perfect example of balancing colors. Whatever color the hat is should be the same color as the boots. However, in order to make them look a little bit more fancy, I went with two-tone boots and just painted the upper half of the boots the same color as the hat, which, uh, going for a light, very bright color, uh, decided to go with a cream, and we are base coating with beige. Since we're painting the hat a very light color, I decided to paint in the shade afterwards rather than trying to build up to a very light color. So for the shade, we are using the same beige with just a little bit of leather brown added to it. We could have easily painted the hat and the boots black and it would be fine. However, by painting it a lighter color, it keeps with our theme of our fancy orc here. It's like a pair of white suede boots, something very impractical, impractical, very hard to keep clean, uh, but it has a, you know, a little air of richness to it. And then we finish off with the final highlight of pale sand. Remember, we're painting a light color, so we don't need a whole bunch of highlights if you remember back to our painting white video. So, uh, just did two highlights, adding more uh, pale sand to the beige, and then straight pale sand, and that was enough. And we can call this figure done. And with that, we are done with our fancy pants orc bard. Look at him singing his heart out. It took a lot of extra time to paint all the small little details on this miniature, but it adds to the story of our orc bard here. Very fancy clothes, they're embroidered, and it has very bright colors, very clean colors. And most importantly, the theme of this video is the colors are balanced. We have the purple on the top and bottom, we have the orange balanced, we have uh, the blue balanced. The only thing we don't have balanced was the red, but it's 
very small portion. It's in the back and also I kind of blended most of it away using the purple and the orange towards the top of the cloak. Now you don't necessarily have to balance all the colors on a miniature, but it does help the visual appeal of it. Uh, imagine if you will, if we just painted the top half of this figure red and the bottom half green. Uh, it would be fine for the most part, depending on how you painted it, uh, but this just looks bit more visually appealing because we have the same colors used throughout. And speaking of theming a miniature, what would you think if we painted this miniature using all greens and browns? Uh, would he look as fancy or would you think he'd be playing uh, his instrument somewhere else in the forest in a, you know, a little dive in somewhere? So picking your colors to theme your player characters is very important. So that's about it for this one. I uh, hope you got something out of it. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.